it's um, Saturday, uh, March 19th, 2022. I'm watching See the BS this morning, on Saturday morning. Um, and there's this place in New York City, it's called, um, after 9-11, uh, the towers fell. Um, they built this other building. Um, I think they call it One Trade Center. I don't know. Again, I'm, I don't go in Manhattan. I don't like Manhattan. I don't like the people. I don't like the sights. I don't like and the confusion of it. It's busy. It's loud. It's obnoxious. Um, and it's just, there's, there's just nothing homely about it. There's nothing tribal about it. There's nothing significant about it. It's just a disgusting, filthy, whatever. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm watching from afar. Their, um, CB See the BS this morning is showing how they rebuilt the, uh, tower in Manhattan, um, and again, everything in Manhattan is so expensive, I don't have money, I don't have a stipend, I don't have a trust, trust fund, yeah, I don't have trust with humans, um, I have nothing, so even gaining access to the one visual art display, I can't, unless somebody takes me, which is like a ridiculous, I feel like a child, it's, it's a horrible way to live, but anyway, so I'm watching this, but what I do have to say is that it's the Hattamas, H-E-T-T-M-A, something, they designed these elaborate leisure, they dream and leisure, those are the two key op words for uh, President Zelensky's um, address to, like, they had dreams and we have needs. Um, and I'm watching, for the head of a group, the most fabulous design that they've done, which is in production. It's, you walk, or, I mean, it looks like you walk into the elevator and that you're actually taking an elevator ride. Whether you are or you're not, I don't know, because I haven't physically been there. <clears throat> However, you get into the elevator, and it's TV screens from the floor to ceiling, and it shows the year in the corner, and the change of the landscape as you go up the building. I literally ro watched it and rewound it. I thought it was the most fascinating. I was like... That is pure genius. That is just absolutely brilliant, whoever came up with that. Um, and I stopped liking Manhattan in the 1800s, for certain. Um, I watched Manhattan's landscape turn to this dirty, disgusting, filthy nest. Somewhere, as soon as the clock turned 19th century, Around 19th century, 1920s, it became a disgusting, filthy nest. Um, and then it just added to itself. Um, and then by 1940s, it was high-rise. I mean, more eyesores without even people being involved in it. The landscape is just a disgusting... Like, just to look at the landscape is so ugly. There's nothing majestic about this other than the disgusting opulence of, like, self-run... Ugh, God, they're horrible. Different stories in about 45 seconds? Yes, 1,200 feet in about 45 seconds, depending on the wind. Jody Roberta started on the project... So this is how <clears throat> Manhattan started. And then... Project well before ground was ever broken. This is the timeline. So here, here's 1850s. And this is the landscape. Just a few village, like a nice size. And like this point, it's a nice size den. 
to work with, and you still have plenty of landscape. Why? You have water back here. You have nice one, you have two-story homes here. Nothing very tall, nothing reaching to the sky. This is a beautiful tribal den of, like, a colony. Why did it ever have to reach and go beyond this? Because when I press play and it goes from 1850 into the 1900s, there is nothing worth living for. There was nothing worth building for because all it did <clears throat> was knock all of the greenery away and then sit upon this beauty and totally crush it out. Because by <clears throat> the time you get to the top, by the time they get to the top of the elevator, you can't even see the original buildings. They're totally gone. They're just rewritten over by some disgusting news story. Ugly, 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 ugly. History from the 1100. Here, 1891, and already the buildings that were the beautiful original colony buildings are already going into the ugly territory. They look more like tenement buildings, they look more factory and industrial like, and all of the greenery is taken away. And that's by 1891. Why? Who allowed when this, I mean, here, um, it's busy. A lot of things go unattended. Why is it ever, why is the envelope ever stretched to that point of, I have attendance, I have control of something, I'm able to keep the people safe, the people healthy, the area nice, the area neat and tidy. Why does it ever, why is it ever allowed to go from this level of safety or 19 whatever, uh, 18 whatever safety, the original one, 1850s. Why was it ever allowed to go from 1850s safety and control and easy and to figure out and maneuver to this level in by 1891 of complete disruption and chaos. The hundreds to today. Every, it's like everything a, from the Native Americans. It's like a disease. Here's 19. It's like a disease that now spread even more. I mean, each one of these buildings brings in hundreds of people. Now, hundreds of people, hundreds of waste, hundreds of use. I mean, why was the population encouraged to spread like this? If you don't build it, they won't come. That's okay. American settlements to the growing industrial... And then here's by 1926. Now you're starting to have taller buildings. Industrial revolution to a metropolis filled with skyscrapers. Metropolis filled with skyscrapers. It is the ugliest, one of the ugliest landscapes on the earth. Yeah, over here. There's that metropolis look. So the minute you get here, you're immersed in the store. This is by the 1950s. I mean, it's just, it's horrible. Story. Welcome to One World Observatory. <laughs> and we're here already. I mean, again, oh, the man, though, that works in this industry, I get, like, he worked, he worked at Universal Studios, and then he opened some other group. They just did something in China. Like, their clients or their clientele that hires them is, like, they, they call them, they, they built dream builders, hang on. Like, on one level, this looks like a dream job. But at another level, it is so opulent. I mean, it's, it's visual art on a grand scale with glass. I mean, it's beautiful, but... I'm a 
group, we'll build it. What we really consider ourselves as storytellers, first and foremost, and we make stories in three dimensions here. We call it stories you can touch. Phil Hedema followed his own dreams and created the storytelling studio. I watch his interview and I'm like, wow, he's a really, he's an incredibly lucky man. Incredibly lucky to have been blessed with this much opportunity and access to funds, people, networks, and opportunity to build this way and to be able to design and create and dream this big. He is incredibly lucky. After leaving attraction development at Universal Studios, I would guess that the word no here is off limits. It certainly is at the beginning of a project. We have a rule in our brainstorming that's no bad ideas because we really want to stretch the envelope on everything we do. The spaces need to be functional, not just part of a set. Projects can take five years or more from development to standing tall, like the One World Observatory in New York City. It took just over two years. The observatory in New York at the World Trade Center was a really complicated project because it didn't want to focus on 9-11, but there wasn't a soul that was going to go to that project that wasn't painfully aware of where they were. So kind of trying to take that and build on that idea, but then ultimately talk about we can now stand on this site and look forward to a brighter future it was a pretty complicated challenge. So we're about to get on the elevator, which will take... Then there's also this morning story <clears throat> about a mother and a son. Um, he plays basketball. Um, they're non-familial. Um, but the mother-son bond. Um, she's some head coach and her son is whatever. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, that was the bond that I have with my Benjamin, my Daniel, and my Alexander, but really my Alexander is the one that I'm bonded to that strongly. Uh, and I was robbed of his entire high school because of this situation of whatever, whenever the world stood still last, which was somewhere in 2015 before Trump became president and Hillary Clinton lost and the dumb, useless Americans cried over stupid shit that I, whatever. Um, they ruined my entire family. They took my children and gave them to the rapist, which is now turned kidnapper. Um... They tried to use the courts in some fashion to grab custody from me, take the children. They tried to hospitalize me and make me sound crazy. They also tried to make me sound like a drug addict, which isn't me. That's 1975 specialty. Um, and then they threw me... The only thing I had left after they took the house, both of them, um, my safe spot, my furniture, my everything threw it out on the curb, and then this is it. And my children are now being raised by the rapist and the kidnapper. And that's 1976. And I'm here without my children and without being able to touch my children and enrich their lives and follow them through. I've had them since they were babies, but I've lost the entire social experience of being able to go through high school with Alexander to be able to go to baseball like with him at a high school level I've been withheld from all of that because of the disgusting humans that that reside in New York State and elsewhere and that is so disgusting because I'm watching this other woman who has basketball money who's raising her son and actually is an active part in her son's life and the opportunity she was given. And then I think of everything that was taken from me prior to with the, the original rape and the original disgusting journey of, tr of survival that I had, trying to stay hidden and quiet with the children safe so we weren't hit with darts and negative racist bullshit. And then the drug cartels moving in and whatnot. And then to 
my them actually taking the children from me and breaking my family apart. So this way my children are robbed of their mother and the bond that we have. Um, I have an immaculate conception and child. I am virgin of the rock, quality genetic, and I'm in a rock, paper, scissors territory. I don't understand how anyone was able to or afforded a voice in ripping me from those kids. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Caterusa. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken. It's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.